about um, recess time and the pre-K group and cleaning um, equipment between recess um, groups and how how's that all going to work? Did you say just with pre-K? Well, I'm thinking of the pre-K groups because they'll be outside and playing and they, they're handling toys and, you know, little babies like to put things in their mouths and um, so I'm just, and then recess at the, I would say the elementary school, if you've got different groups coming in and out at recess time, is that equipment being cleaned in between each of those different groups? So I was just talking to Kevin about a pre-K to see if it was similar to what we're doing okay. in elementary. So, Yes, we are not cleaning the playground equipment after each group of students plays on it. The custodial team will be cleaning the playground equipment once a day. I believe that's in the mornings, in the mornings, Patty. They will go out and clean the equipment outside. The equipment that the students use, our, our elementary principals have been very creative and having great conversation around this. They have purchased most of them, if not all of them, new playground equipment. So a grade level has their material. And some of them, a teacher has their materials, meaning balls and all of the other things that kids like to play with on the playground. They've also designated their playground area and outside area into zones. So one zone might be the field. And Mr. Schindler's class gets the field on Monday, zone A. Zone B might be the playground. And so Mr. Schindler's class is going to get zone B on Tuesday and any equipment that goes along with it. The principals have also talked about what sanitizing that um, those balls will look like. But of course, they're staying in their homeroom class in their zone during recess. So they'll be playing with, you know, the equipment that they have with the kids that they are engaged with for the most part throughout the school day. So they've been very methodical in, uh, in doing that. I know I got an email from a secretary and a principal one day saying, can you please go and approve Munis? We've ordered a lot of new things for kids to have on the playground. So they have been working on that. I do have one more question um, regarding the students who are in the virtual academy. They're in a really unique position right now because they're dual enrolled in two different schools essentially. And what are the efforts being made to make sure that there's a community being built among the virtual academy but they're still retaining that community of their home school? So we actually talked uh, today with uh, principals about that and so Many of our principals have already been communicating to families where their students will be in virtual campus, um, in virtual campus separately than students in person. And many of our principals have newsletters and communications going out that is, you know, their areas designated for students participating in virtual campus and in person. Students participating in virtual campus will still receive the communications from their principal at their home school. So if there are events going on, activities, mostly virtual right now, families will still get those. You know, we are still working on what school pictures look like. Once we get that figured out, you know, we will make sure that our students participating in the virtual campus have the opportunity to get to the school to, you know, have their school picture taken as well. So um, we've designated in our elementary school well, in all of our schools, our assistant principals and our counselors are still the contact if there is a need. And so the teacher servicing a student who may not happen to be in that teacher's home school will know who the contact is if they have a need. Um, our principals are also communicating information regarding specific data points that would be most advantageous for our teachers to know before they start working with kids. Now, one other question regarding staffing, maybe Dr. Bogus can help us with this, but uh, you know, we talked about, or you all talked about the fact that uh, some teachers may have to change schools. Uh, they may have to change assignments. Students may have to change schools. So how's that all worked out? I mean, did, did it work out pretty evenly for the most part, or are there any issues with it? 
e come on up, Mike. Evenly, I, I, I'm not <laughs> sure evenly, but I will tell you that Mike and Kim have spent an inordinate amount of time looking at all of this and doing the very best that they can. Trying to keep some keep kids together, meaning if the homeschool cannot support all of the students who requested to participate in virtual campus, that we can divide the kids possibly, you know, between two schools. So if we have, you know, 10 kids, we may have to have five go to, you know, be serviced by a teacher who technically teaches at another school, but can we have five with this teacher and then five with another teacher versus taking all 10 and putting them in 10 different spots. So at least when they're on that Zoom call, initially there's somebody that they have seen before uh, from class first quarter. Mike, if you wanna, do you want to address anything else? No. Okay. <laughs> so did so did many teachers have to change assignments uh, or change schools because of the staffing uh, arrangements that needed to be taking place? So teachers picking up and moving the, all of their materials and their things from one school to another because they actually had to move buildings. We'll talk about that part. So we did have situations at the middle school level uh, to work our way through scheduling. Uh, so I'll give an example. Um, if we had a choir teacher that needed to go virtual, uh, she would be or he would be teaching, bless you, virtually. Another choir teacher who was in person might have to go on A days at Central Middle, B days might have to go to West Middle to teach the in-person uh, choir class. So as we scheduled all the individuals uh, that needed in person or needed virtual, that created some need for those teachers that are in person to move buildings based on, again, we were trying to do it on a, a rotation of days. Right. So within a day, they wouldn't necessarily travel between two buildings, but they might travel opposite days. Well, that's great that that all worked out, you know, pretty well considering and and it um, seems like everyone's making an effort to make it work. A lot of work uh, was done in a short amount of time yeah. uh, and very proud of, of the teachers as they received the information of where they were going to be assigned. The principals who uh, talked with the teachers, um, just really proud of all the work done by the schedulers, as was said earlier. Uh, a six month process done in about three, three and a half weeks. Um, definitely a lot of labor intensive long hours. Great job. Oh, yeah. As Chelsea just kind of reminded me, high school first stage started today. So um, with our elementary school and middle schools from the original decision to come back uh, pre-K eight, uh, we were about three weeks ahead of the high school for catching that them up from our last uh, conversation of bringing 912 back. High school teachers were shared today starting the conversations of those that are doing virtual and their placements. Thank you all very, very much. Uh, we really appreciate the comprehensive uh, overview from from uh, Robin's report to uh, all the reports of, of how school is is uh, coming back uh, in person and in virtual uh, at the same time. So we really appreciate that, and uh, we'll continue uh, to expect uh, updates as as we get into these first few days back in buildings and and. Uh, We'll keep moving forward. So thank you all. Uh, we have no uh, closed session to go into. So the next anticipated closed session will be held on November 18th, 2020. Details of the closed session will be posted within 24 hours of the anticipated meeting. Uh, before, we, uh, before we close, I'll just kind of reiterate uh, something Dr. Marty mentioned earlier, and that is uh, that we really are looking for our community uh, as a whole to, uh, to do what uh, is necessary to 
keep us moving in the right direction, uh, keep our community uh, healthy. Uh, we keep hearing that the uh, vaccine is pretty close, and uh, we're very optimistic that that's the case, and, and we, can, uh, we can get back to some degree of normalcy uh, very soon. But in the meantime, uh, keep doing everything that we can. Uh, keep, uh, parents, keep encouraging your kids. Kids, keep encouraging your parents. Um, <laughs> And uh, together we'll get through this. So thank you all for uh, participating uh, either virtually or uh, here in person tonight in our new, uh, our new space. Uh, it's worked out very well. Uh, so may I have a motion and a second to adjourn the regular meeting? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Thank you all very much.